Hi, I'm Mark Zeller, an engineer here with Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. I'm going to take a few minutes today and demonstrate how to set up the SCL 710 motor protection relay. I'm going to set the SCL 710 motor protection relay using the nameplate application. This application uses basic motor information. You enter that information into the relay and it calculates all the necessary settings to protect the motor. We're going to go ahead and set the nameplate from the front panel so there's no need for a laptop computer or any software. The buttons and the display are all you need to get started. There's going to be some basic information you need to set the nameplate application. Now I've printed out the SCL 710 setting sheet and it has all the nameplate information that I'm going to need to fill out. Now I'm going to need a couple of references to go back and fill in all the information for these key variables. Now one of those sheets is a motor control center one-line diagram and it contains information such as the voltage, the current transformer, and the potential transformer ratios as well as some other motor information. I know it's a little hard to see so I did a little zoom in where you can go in and see the bus voltage, pull out the CT ratios, pull out the PT ratio, and have the motor information as well. So after pulling that information off of the one-line diagrams, I went through and just pulled out the motor data sheet and basically all the information we need to set the motor nameplate application in the relay is provided on this nameplate application data sheet right from the motor manufacturer including the full load current and any of the other pertinent information we're going to need to set the relay. So I went ahead and pulled all this information off those sheets and I filled out my nameplate application setting sheet with all the information I need to set the relay. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's set that relay. Okay, again, I'm going to do the information setting right from the front panel. And to get started, I'm going to go through and select the Set Show menu. That's where you make the setting changes. And I'm going to change some of those global settings. So the first thing I'm going to do is change the application from a full protection application to a nameplate, which is a more condensed application setting. But the first thing I need to do is enter the password. Okay, now that I've entered the application password, I can now change the settings in the relay. So it's currently set for a full application, and I'm going to change that to nameplate. So now I've changed the application to nameplate settings, and we'll go through and update all of the settings for our nameplate application. One of the things I need to do is save that nameplate application setting, and I'm going to change that to yes, and save that. And it takes a moment for the relay to calculate up all the internal settings it's going to need to pull from those nameplate application settings. So I'm going to set my group 1 settings and go straight to the configuration. First question it asks for is what's the CT ratio? And you remember we pulled the CT ratio off the one line diagram. And the CT ratio, as in this example, it's a 1500 to 5 CT, so I divide 1500 by 5 and I end up with my CT ratio of 300. So we're going to change the default setting from 100 to 300. The next setting it's going to ask is what's the full load amps? The full load amps for this motor was 439, so we're going to make that change. The CT ratio for the neutral is the next setting, and again the default is 100, and I need to reset that to 10. So we're going to make the change from 100 to 10. As for the PT ratio, the PT ratio for this particular application was 120. And the nominal voltage is set for 4160. Now if you looked at the motor nameplate, it was rated for 13,200 volts. But the motor control center supplies a rated voltage of 13,800 volts. So we're going to set the relay to the rated bus voltage of 13,800 volts. And we have a Y set connection for our motor, so I'm going to change the delta Y setting to Y. And this also has an option for a single voltage, but we have three voltages, so we leave the single voltage set at no. 
So now we're back to where we started on the CT ratio. So we'll move back out of this menu and move down and set the thermal overload settings, which those include the service factor, which the default is 1.15, and our motor is also 1.15, so no change is necessary. The locked rotor amps uses multiples of full load amps. This motor was rated for six times full load amps, and again, no change is necessary from the default. This is the locked rotor hot stall time, and the default is 10 seconds. This motor has a rating of 39 seconds for that locked rotor hot stall time. And you see that takes us through those settings we needed for the thermal overload. The last setting we need to put in is the neutral overload settings. And again, it's asking for, do we want to set the neutral overload? It's not required, but this relay and application did have a CT for the neutral, so we're going to go ahead and set those. Typically, you would set the neutral high enough to avoid a nuisance trip, but sensitive enough to detect a fault, typically two times the CT rating. In this case, I'm going to set the pickup a little more sensitive at one times the CT ratio and a delay of 0.1 seconds. I'll go back to the motor start report after my first start and check my margins during the starting conditions. Okay, then it's going to ask if I want to save all of those changes, and I do want to save those. And the relay will blink, it'll save the settings, and that's it, we're ready to go. That's all you need to do to program the SCL710 motor protection relay to be up and running and protecting your motor on your system. Now there's a lot more things that are available in the relay. There's extra configurations for advanced protection schemes, there's communications, there are event reports, there are motor start reports. There's a lot more power built into this box that you can access. If you want more information, go to our website at selinc.com and look up the 710 instruction manual and you'll find a whole bunch more information on this and many other protection relays here at SEL.